hopefully they can celebrate with them at the end of the second. And uh, they have kicked off, and Simon Francis immediately has the ball at right back into Steve Cook, who spreads it along the deck to Charlie Daniels, just inside his own half, shed, shad shadowed and shepherded by Goodmanson. And a crossfield ball from Cook, looking towards Matt Ritchie, he's headed out of play. It'll be a throw into the cherries just inside their own half. Determined to start fast, Sermon gets it back to Francis. Now Cook again, just behind the centre circle, taps it on to Daniels in front of us on this left-hand side. Orange booted Steve Cook looks up for another diagonal ball, can't see it. Goes square to Simon Francis. He slides it forward to Andrew Sermon and took him a good position. Infield to Kerm against, against his former club, he's fouled, surely. Neil Swarbrick agrees, and the Cherries immediately have a free kick, which Matt Ritchie will fancy 25 yards out, dead centre. Well, big passes, he could, they couldn't get the nearest. Charlton, now this one, there's a little bit of a breeze. Would you say it's going in our favour, at just? It hasn't been going in our favour temperature-wise, but I would say it probably is looking at the balloons heading that way. Yeah, Either yeah. way, it's making the goalkeeper's lives a little more awkward than well, it might be. Yes, he's going to, and as you say, Matt, he's going to have a look at this. And it, it's well, like he used to put it on the breeze. Ipswich have gone one up at Blackburn early. Here's the free kick. The wall is being lined up by Neil Swarbrick with his shaving foam about a yard inside the penalty area. So they would have only about four yards out with their own efforts. He's marching them back, Neil Swarbrick. So this is a good distance. Kermigan wants it with his right foot. Sermon's going to tap it possibly, and Richie might leather it with his left. Let's have a look what happens. Dead centre. Sermon over it. Richie behind it. Kermigan to the side. Four men in the wall. Henderson waits in the Charlton goal. Kermigan, right-footed, hits the wall, brings the ultimate anti-climax, but then he chips it back into the penalty area, and it's headed half away, but not cleared. Arthur sends it back out to this left wing, and Pugh's first touch, he can't control it with his head. It goes out for a goal kick, and Derby are training 1-0 at home to Reading. What a story that would be if they lost out on the Pfizer final day. Some early goals. Ipswich ahead at Blackburn, Derby training at Reading. 0-0 nil -nil here, we've only played two minutes. The Cherries, Boric's in goal. Francis, Elphick, Cook and Daniels make up the defence, of course. The midfield, Richie, Arter, Sermon and Pugh. And up front, Kermigan and Wilson. Charlton, Stephen Henderson in goal. Chris Solly at right-back. Morgan Fox at left-back, the Welshman. Tal Ben, Haim and Roger Johnson make up a very experienced centre-half pairing. In midfield, Goodmanson on the right, the Icelander. Bulo, the Gabon international on the left. And Boyens and Diara the Frenchman in midfield with top scorer Igor Vettakele up front with 11 goals and Tony Waters Wilson's put him down the right shoots deflects saved by Henderson and behind for a corner well good work first of all from Jan Kermigan and then Callum just got the ball out of his free I think you'll think he should have done better but he's forced the keeper to make a save well the defender got a touch as he slid in front of the shot I think it deflected before it got to the keeper which took the sting out of it as well so out in the ball for this corner, Matt Ritchie one of them. And by the way, that's the Bournemouth fans singing, in case you're wondering. Corner on the far side, away to our left, on the Cherry's right. Ritchie and Sermon work a short one. Goes back to Ritchie, slides it to the D. Dummy, Kermigan shot first time, curled over and wide and out for a goal kick. But there is no doubt who has started the bright of the two teams. Oh, how slick was that for a set play? OK, Kermigan tried to curl it into the top corner, but they put a little... <laughs> Bit of an extra package on it from the one we've seen before. Very yeah. unfortunate. Good that, was, work. that was nice. That was like a, an American football move. That had about five elements to it. One in, one out, one over, one behind. It was brilliant. Shamey Cook curled it five yards wide as Charlton try and get an attack going themselves. Got to the edge of the penalty area. Shot won't come in. Elphick makes the tackle with help from Francis. And then it comes off the Charlton player, Bulo, and out from Sermon's work for a goal kick for the Cherries. A little bit of danger there, though. Veta Kelly, the Belgian-born Angolan, top scorer, is obviously a nuisance. Well, uh, just for their formation, it, they've lined 4 three, 3 but as usual, they spring to a five in midfield and we have the ball. The uh, ball played across the bottom of the centre circle and Sermon has to stretch, does well to play into the Charlton half, but it's poorly defended in the end by Charlton, given away by Tal Ben Hayim, Wilson left-hand edge of the box, looks up, cuts in field, wants the shot, doesn't take it, Arter wants the shot from inside the D, back out to the left of Pugh, 12 yards out, curls it, doesn't get the curl he required, it goes well wide in the end, he was looking for a lovely finish into the top corner. Well, he, he was, and you know, 
the three boys who had the ball before, who were both in a similar position. Cameron, Cam, Cameron first of all, and Jan Kermigan all could have tried that little curler into the far post with a bit of a help of a breeze. Arter could have hit it from the D and had a strike and had a go and tested Stephen Henderson. 27 today, the Charlton goalkeeper, the Irishman, bright, luminous green shirt, clears long, only as far as the chest of Steve Cook. Down off the chest to Harry Arter and back to Elphick in applause for the neat work from the Cherries, which epitomises their game, of course. Crisp passing at a high tempo, difficult to defend against, and they've certainly been that this season, haven't they? Pugh plays it down the left. Tal Ben Haim volleys it back into the Bournemouth half. Cook first to react, nods it into the centre circle, and Kermigan drops deep to get it to Francis. Rich is hugging the white stuff out on the right-hand side. Plays it forward to Francis, who continued his run into the box, tries to cross, gets a second chance, pulls it back towards Arta. In the end, it's well read by Morgan Fox, and the young Welshman, the left-back, clears left-footed, high up to halfway, but only back to the Cherries. Elphick's chest puts Sermon in a bit of trouble, but they've run it back and worked it well, and Pugh's come in off the left wing to gather in the centre circle. Well, they're just keeping the ball moving here. Very nicely. Looks a real confident start from the boys. Every time Charlton clear, they just give it back to Bournemouth on halfway, but now they'll try and break themselves. Tricky Gabon International. Bulo will play it off the left. Comes forward, approaching the penalty area. Charlton now chipped again towards Bulo. As Tony Watts, the young Scotsman, tried to get it to him. And then Wilson just takes a knock as he challenges Roger Johnson, the former Wolves and Birmingham centre-back, of course. And Wilson is hobbling and Charlton have the ball. Lifted forward, down the left wing, looking for a chasing run, but they won't keep that in, will they? Well, they have, there's no flags gone up, everyone stops and Charlton have got possession still. Ball crossed back towards the edge of the box and then a hoof. Can't describe it as any more of that than that from Boyens into the Cherries fans. And the ball comes back out along with the beach ball and a rubber ring. Nil-nil. Well, it tried to get all the path, but as you say, that one high and wide I think it's been a great start you know we've moved the ball well nice bit of play on the set piece seven minutes gone goalless but all Bournemouth so far in all honesty Buyens plays it back to Solly and Fox tried to hold it up through Watts the ball's gone out of play for a chart and throw the referee signalled and they've taken it quickly now Bulo Again, tries to play it infield, almost found Kermigan. Helped on by Diara, and Tal Ben Haim and Roger Johnson will get it at the back for Charlton. And look up, long ball forward, the raking pass as Elphick climbs over Bulo, clears it, and then the back pass, the header is poor, Wilson will capitalise, left right-hand edge of the penalty area, near the byline, tries to put it back for Kermigan, then he looks for Pugh with a second bite, and Diara tidies up for Charlton and does well. And they will try and clear through Morgan Fox, up into the feet of Watts, holds it up. Trance can't spin away from Sermon. Now Alu Diara, the experienced Frenchman, who's had a strange career for a man of 33. Off the right-hand side, this time the cross from Goodmanson, who's been quiet so far. Cherries get possession back, Arter wins it back, Cook has it, inside his own half, 0-0. Francis, just short of halfway. It must be weird for the Charlton fans, Willow. It's like an away game. Well, I think the way the boys are moving the ball round does suggest that uh, we look like the home team, no doubt about that. Cook plays it out to Daniels, who's taken a position of a lovely first-time ball into Pew. Pew approaching the D, plays it into Kermigan, back to goal, 16 yards out. Holds it up for Ritchie! Off the post! 1-0 Bournemouth at the Valley! Another fantastic first-time strike from Matt Ritchie. 14 league goals for the season for the Scottish international, and that one as sweet as any, as sweet as the goal against Bolton on Monday, and Bournemouth deserved uh, the early lead. I have to say, Adam, that one's better. We've passed the ball from right back to left back of the pitch. We've gone inside, come back out. Absolutely top draw before young Matt. Had lots to do, really. Way out on a bit of an angle, but he fired it into the far corner. What a goal! Absolutely top draw football to watch. 
I'm not even sure I that that's, that just must go in one of the top five goals. Yeah, I think that's going to be a candidate for goal of the season. That is the 96th league goal Bournemouth have scored this season. What a fabulous start. And it was such a good move. Cook pinged it first time to Daniels, who pinged it first time to Pugh, who played it into Kermigan, who held it up and waited for Ritchie to run onto it. And he played it in off the post, placed it past Henderson, off the post, fantastic. And now Sermon's making a barnstorming run. Chips it over Tal Ben Hayim, keeps it in near this corner flag. Has support, but he's just tackled. And the right back, Solly, will clear up to halfway. But Charlton, well, do you know what? The way they started, Willow, that 100 goals in the league's got a, got a shout. <laughs> They've only got four to go. Well, I know we've been high scoring, but just at the moment, it's an absolute wonder to watch them play. Well, I hope you enjoy listening stuff. to your fellow fans at home because it's a fantastic atmosphere here and they've made the perfect start. Matt Ritchie scoring in his 100th appearance for Bournemouth in all competitions. What a nice way to round the season. Well, I, I, I was starting to count when they, I got to 10 but lost it and Matty put the ball away. Oh, now he has given it away. Arta into the box, 2 0. Mistake made, confusion between Tao Ben Haim and Yoni Boyens and Harry Arter said thank you very much. He scores, it's two in three minutes for Bournemouth. It is easy as the fans are already charting. It's Charlton nil, Bournemouth two. Over to you, Watford. Uh, well, sometimes you do get a little bit beyond yourself with the amount of things we might like achieve here. Well, you just mentioned the good goals. <laughs> and I think you could be right the way we're going. Absolute. Well, he just stole the ball. It was a gift. It was a gift. He didn't have an awful lot to do, Harry, but he managed to do it very well. He was selective, picked the corner and punched it home. Uh, you still have to put him away. And didn't he? Tao Ben Haim and Boyens. And the key Pompey fans will be smiling at the thought of Tao Ben Haim making a bad mistake. No love lost for him at Fratton Park. Won't be much at the Valley the way he's playing so far. Long ball forward from Charlton, Cook again, majestic. Chest it down, lovely first touch from Kermigan. Another sweeping move building for the Cherries. Sermon onto Ritchie, Francis bombing on the overlap. Francis will get the ball, right-footed, low into the box, and Wilson ruins the end of the move by losing control. I, I think he was in, I think uh, Ariata was in on <laughs> goal again, if he'd just run over the ball. Yeah, if he dummies it. Still, they'll come again, Cook, and there's a real... Buzz are out the players oh, now. There's some surging. Slick stuff. Cook with real purpose into the Charlton half. Elphick, cool as a cucumber on halfway, just helps it on and then points and puts people in position. Richie hugging the touchline back to Francis, just over halfway. Sermon, his pass blocked by Boyens, who gets it back. The tall Belgian looks up from inside the centre circle, trying to find Goodmanson on this right hand side. I almost said that right. Now forward from Solly, the right back. He finds Goodmanson. Down in front of us, only five yards inside the Cherries half. And as with all good teams, Willow, Bournemouth quickly in shape without the ball and working hard to close down space. Well, well they are, and that's something we'll have to do next season, but yeah. we're still enjoying this season. And that one's... Well, Ben Hyam just played it into Tony Watts, who just decided to scuff one from 30 yards just to give the Cherries fans something to laugh at. 2-0. <laughs> Goal kick Bournemouth. Somebody, somebody very impressed me very much by remembering Tony Watts as a teenager. He's only 21 now. Do you remember what he did in Scotland when he was at Celtic? As a teenager, Willow, he scored the winning goal against Barcelona. Oh, I do remember that one. When, yeah. when, when they beat Barcelona 2-1. It wasn't the brightest spark then with that shot. <laughs> no. If that's if that's as close as they get to goal, Willow, it's going to be a fun afternoon, and that hundreds under threat. 14 minutes gone, 2-0, Pugh with a lovely little turn away from Boyens, that was skill. What a journey for Mark Pugh in the five years he's now completing with Bournemouth from signing from Hereford United. Fantastic journey he's had, he's already got nine league goals himself this season in the Championship. It is 2-0 here. Early strikes from Ritchie and Arta. Arta gifted a goal after a cock-up between Tal ben Haim and Boyens. And Richie's goal, one of the contenders for goal of the season. Another brilliant sequence of first-time passing. And as so often the case, Willow, Jan Kermigan, cool, picking out the right man as he holds the ball up. Well, he's had about five touches, Jan, and they've all been really important. Mm. 
Forrester losing home to Cardiff, I think. I was sort of listening in my ears. And Joe Rules has got a goal there. But the important goals are Ipswich up away from home and Derby losing home to Reading. And, of course, it's 2-0 here to Bournemouth as they... Steve Cook hits another crossfield ball. Somehow, Richie gets it off Morgan Fox. And then, unfortunately for him, having robbed the fullback, back the ball that came out of the sky gave it away. And uh, Bulo does well to skip away from a couple of challenges, one of which was from Sermon, who tracks him back to halfway. And Charlton have it at the back, and Talbain Hayim gets rid of it quickly into Goodmanson, who tried to flick it on, but to no-one. And it's just easy for Steve Cook again. It's all Bournemouth. Pew down the left, Daniels on the overlap, midway inside the Charlton half. Pew goes infield. Arter's there, good tackle from Diara. Back to Pugh, though, still Daniels wants it on the wing. Daniels gets it, deflects off the tackle from Boyens, and then out from Solly, it's a throw into Bournemouth, but it was just incessant pressure. It absolutely is, and he's not talking about fast football. Charlie Daniels on the ball again, looking to throw the ball in and keep us moving. 2 0, it's a throw almost level with the edge of the chart and penalty area, but this time Solly and Williams combined to get the ball back for Charlton. Watts is tackled on a halfway by Cook, who I thought got the ball, but Neil Swarbrick says it's a free kick. He tripped him as well. Charlton's home record, by the way, isn't bad. They've only lost four here all season in the league. One nine, they're the draw specialist, which has cost them challenging for the playoffs, plus that dodgy spell that cost Bob Peters his job. But the one nine, draw nine, lost four is not a bad home no, record. No, it's not. It's... To only lose four times. Mind you, the Cherries have only lost five times away, Willow. <laughs> and have scored 47 goals in the process. Um, Fixed them doing, no doubt about it. They're really on the, on the ball today, as you would expect. And the ball with Charlton. Get it back to Stephen Henderson. There's a black balloon floating near him. He ignores that and clears left-footed. Up. And a big challenge in the air from Tommy Alfred. Wins it over Veta Kelly, who's been done nothing in the game so far. Maybe he's got his uh, sombrero and flip-flops on. And Solly comes forward, midway inside the Cherries half, down the right. Looked like he's going to be a tackle, but it's good skill in the end from Watts, who gets to the byline, drills it across the six-yard area, and Veta Kelly nearly came to life. He can't slide in and get the ball. It's a goal kick with a first really decent penetrating run by Charlton. Yes, that, that's their best effort to date, and just attack down this right-hand side. Just went past well, got in front of Daniels anyway and hit it down the corridor of uncertainty but no red shirty able to get on the end of it goal kick if you're joining us late the good news from the valley is that AFC Bournemouth are heading towards their 13th away win of this record-breaking historic season they lead Charlton 2-0 here live on BBC Radio Solent Sport we're only in the 18th minute early goals from Matt Ritchie and Harry Arter uh, separating the sides. Uh, Charlton is the third best. How many goals early on we have scored in in away games, especially it seems. Yeah, like starting well, Willow. Like to have that one up. Easy to say, isn't it? We want to start well, not so easy to do when the opposition have a say, but Charlton haven't had a say at all in this game. And the class between the two teams is frightening in a good way. Cook, just short of halfway, wants the play to spread in front of him, flings his arms out, in the end goes short to Daniels, played down the left, Tal ben Haim has to defend with Wilson scaring him, and then the clearance from Henderson, who got an awkward one from Tal ben Haim, had to volley it, headed down cleverly by Pugh, and now Solly's rushing to get back with him, Pugh sends it back onto his right foot, infield to Sermon, 25 yards out, into Wilson, turns in the box, by the penalty spot, skips round two, oh, and the dive deflects it away, otherwise it was 3-0. Oh my goodness. Oh dear. Three people he's gone by. He's six yard out. I think he just wants an empty net to hit it in Callum. The Steve. last little shimmy round the last defender was beautiful. He ended on his backside, but unfortunately he couldn't score. Oh. Unbelievable stuff. Two deflected shots for the top scorer. Two, two under the goalkeeper here from this corner. Three running in from a penalty spot. Yep. Cook, Elphick, and Pure, and then it's flicked on at the near post by Kermigan from Richie's corner, but it's out for a goal kick. Another goal to tell you about. Wolves, I think, are in the goals. They lead Millwall. And uh, Dicko has scored for Wolves. That's not his nickname. That's his name. Millwall, of course, relegated. Wolves starting the day eighth on 75 points. Seventh, Brentford on 75. Sixth at the start of the day. Derby on 77 and Ipswich fifth on 78. Derby losing to Reading under threat 
now from Walsh. Cook over halfway, and again a lovely first touch from Kermigan. Arter now can rush into the Charlton half, he's got Ritchie to his right, pokes it out to Ritchie. Up comes Francis, inside him, cross goes early left-footed, headed away by Roger Johnson, and Sermon will try and get it back for Bournemouth on halfway, and coolly does so, all the way to Arter Boric, 2-0. Now yeah, that's a work by Andrew Sermon there, <coughs> just making sure the back door's locked off, and we don't get broken on. Yeah. All back to Boric, nice and sensitive. Harry Arter saying Drew Sermon, for all the help he's given him, would be his player of the season earlier, as Daniels picks up from a lovely flick from Kermigan out to this left wing. Again, Arter is inside. Pugh wants it, he's playing centrally. Squares it to Kermigan, midway inside the Charlton half. Forward to the feet of Arter, to Wilson. First time shot, deflects, and lands on top of the net. And it'll be a corner, and another last gasp block. Stops Charlton going further behind. Well, excellent play. 9, 10, 11, 12 passes to get us in and around the goal. Finally, Callum Wilson just lets one fire it in, but a little deflection takes it over the top, lands on the net. I've just written Wilson's shot blocked, and I've just gone ditto, ditto, ditto two minutes later. He should have a goal by now, Callum. Could have had a hat trick by now, couldn't he? 21 minutes gone, corner short from Bournemouth on this left hand side, went to Arta. He swings it 30 yards in field. Francis may hit this. He drills it low just past the post. And Henderson was rushing to his right. And that wasn't far away from the big man. Another set of play. This one completely different. They must be thinking, my goodness, what have we come up against here, Charlton? That time, a real deep uh, version of the ball that goes across the face of the penalty area and ends up in a shot. Simon Francis coming from late on the halfway line. Just a foot wide. Bournemouth are like a football machine at the moment, Willow. This is an absolute joy as Francis's header goes backwards from Henderson's long clearance on the far side, out of play for a Charlton throw in. And uh, they can't have played better. I mean, I've seen well, 20 I've... games this season. I'm not sure they've played any slicker than this. I was just trying to think, Adam, have I seen better than this? I'm not quite sure whether we have. Absolutely fantastic stuff. What pleasure to be here on the final day as Watts is crowded out of the ball by Arter and Pugh and Pugh's been central for a lot of the game so far now Kermigan finds himself out on the right wing Pugh sent him out there he checks and turns infield closed down by Buyens but really Charlton by the last 20 minutes are going to be gasping for air Willow the way this is going well that's the problem you have because this team also plays fast, fast football it's economical the way the ball is passed round we're only a quarter of the way through the game. The Cherries have had six chances already after 22 minutes and scored twice. They're building again now down the right-hand side. Kermigan makes his way to the box. Francis has it. He goes short to Sermon, who dinks it back over a defender. Thought he was fouled. Francis can't gather, and it's cleared away. But again, it's just hacked away by Charlton and kept in by Tommy Elphick, who has support from Harry Arter. Arter will send it across the centre circle. Watford are one up against Sheffield Wednesday. He's the only dampener on the day so far. Vidra's scored. Good ball from Kermigan. Richie tries to thread it through for Wilson. Richie might have another go. Tackle comes in once more. He's bustling away there, working hard with Roger Johnson. And the ball out of play and out for a Bournemouth throw. It was a mismatch, wasn't it? The huge figure of Johnson and Matt Ritchie. But Matt yeah, Ritchie won the throw. He was tenacious though, Matt. He didn't give up easily. He's a terrier, isn't he? Matt Ritchie, that's for sure. Amazing support here today. I don't know if you're picking up all the noise. I hope they are. Otherwise, our kit isn't working. And we're, we're talking to ourselves. 2 <laughs> 0. <laughs> Cardiff 2 0 for Nottingham Forest. And Doyle has a goal there. Here, Bournemouth 2 0 for Charlton. Francis over halfway. Short ball infield to Andrew Sermon. Sermon square to Arter. And again, the Cherry shifting Charlton from side to side. Daniels back into Harry Arter, who's sat deep, allowing Sermon to go forward. Pugh with his back to goal, just tapped by Diara, but he got the pass away, and it's back with Steve Cook, and now Bournemouth will switch it from left to right, Francis, forward to the feet of Wilson, 30 yards out, spins away from Johnson, and he's just had his shirt tugged, surely, should be a first yellow card of the afternoon, Roger Jensen called back by referee Neil Swarbrick, Johnson just waves an indignant arm at the referee, as if he's moaning, but it was an awful tug back, Wilson had done him, he got too tight. You know, it's just occurred to me when... Callum Wilson comes towards the ball, he's a million pound player. When he comes towards and spins in behind with the ball, he's a 10 million pound player. <laughs> yeah, so anyone listening who's watching him is at least 10 million pounds. 
just fantastic. Just a little touch off the side of his foot there, slid it down the side of the centre half, and he was gone. Well, the Johnson's, marvelous shape. Johnson's got a wider turning circle, and he's not as fast, so he knew he was in trouble. 25 minutes gone. Another good free kick situation for the Cherries. Well, it looks like they're under negotiation there. I don't know where they yeah. three of them are out. Kieran up again. It's Kermigan, Sermon, and Ritchie. This time it's about five yards from the box. Centre right, shall we say, about seven, eight yards from the D. Five red shirts in the wall. Kermigan leaves it this time. Sermon taps it. Ritchie hits it into the wall again. Back to Kermigan, curls it to the far post cleverly, and it's headed behind for a corner. Well, another set play that didn't quite come off of a short corner. That's taken quickly. It is back to Daniels. Former's just not giving Charlton any respite. Ritchie dinks it towards the back post. Tal Ben Haim off balance, heads it away. And Kermigan will keep it in on the right. He's got Cook up in an advanced position, sensing a repeat of Fulham. And he plays it back to Sermon. And the Cherries still keep possession. And the red and white shirts just shift across the pitch from side to side, trying to track the ball and the movement. Pew for Daniels. Daniels trying to get in behind Goodmanson. Daniels has done that, but he just got nudged enough that he had to poke the ball off balance. And it goes out for a goal kick. Why is Daniels carrying the ball? He wants to just give it back. There we go. Goal kick to Charlton, 2-0 to Bournemouth. It's, frankly, a procession, but it's an impressive procession. It is. You wouldn't think these boys would do a holiday, would you? No. They've got 50, well, 60, 70 minutes to go, and that's it for the season, but they're giving full value for money here. Watford 1-0 up against Sheffield Wednesday through Matty Vidra, remember? And the race for the playoffs hotting up, Derby losing at home, Ipswich looking safe, they're winning. And Wolves leading Millwall. Brentford also in the shake-up, of course, to make the play. And Brentford have just taken the lead against Wigan. Against Wigan. <laughs> Alex Pritchard, not Wigard. <laughs> Fall out with Bournemouth on the left. Daniels just inside the Charlton half. Two defenders in front of him, so it goes back to Steve Cook. Cook and Elphick, ever-presence. The two Brighton boys. Elphick, by the way, Willow, in 46 games, only booked six times. Which is a remarkable. Very impressive. Especially for a centre half. Yeah. Five goals for Steve Cook as well. That's impressive for a defender. Yeah, it's something a little bit of a competition there. Yeah. Always like to see your, your centre halves get at least five. Well, Tommy's got to get more than a hat trick to get there today. I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, Kermigan could be on for one or two the way things have gone. Wilson picks it up midway inside the chart and half off the Frenchman. Out to Ritchie. Wilson down the right, continues his run towards the byline, pulls it back into the penalty area, headed away by Johnson. Another cor corner to the Cherries. And again, it was Matt, Matt Ritchie this time who just slid the ball in. A talented trunk. He tried to stand it up, I think it clipped to the far post, but it's headed up for the corner. Ritchie places the ball down in the quadrant. Goes back to Francis, another short one. Not sure if there was a plan on that, but he took it quickly, and now Ritchie has it back from a different angle. Chips it infield towards Harry Arter, but he's stretching him, and the long legs of Alu Diara will get there first, but his control is woeful. And he's lucky to get a ricochet like a pinball off about five shins. And now Charlton try and burst forward to give their fans something to cheer about. Played out to Vetter Kelly on the right-hand corner of the penalty area. Eight blue shirts back. And Vetter Kelly just played it to one of them. And Bournemouth will try and clear their lines. And the groans around the valley tell you everything to know about the first, what, 28 and a half minutes of this game. 2-0 yeah. to the Cherries. And that's what, precisely what I'm on about. As soon as, because our team is economical, when Charlton do get the ball back, they've, nothing, no, they've run the leg, their legs have been run out of them by the way we pass the ball round. Yeah, Ali Diara, by the way, Willow. 33 years old, the Frenchman, who's been at West Ham, hardly played a game in his whole career. I know that sounds odd, hardly played any matches for any club, apart from Bordeaux, but has made a heck of a career as Ritchie threads it down the right wing and Francis has gone bolting on beyond him. Francis towards the penalty area, defender slips over, Francis slides it for Wilson, Wilson on his right foot from a narrow angle, has his shot blocked by Tal Ben Haim, it's another corner to Bournemouth, defence into attack in the blink of an eye. Well, it was, and it's Sam and Francis that tried to put Callum in this time. Even the goalkeeper, look, he's holding on to the ball, he's trying to take the sting out of the corner so they can get their breath back, Charlton. Alu Diara's career started at Bayern Munich and then he went to Liverpool. He didn't play for either team. Didn't play a game. Bournemouth have the corner on the right. Cloudy conditions, but it's sunny on the pitch. Into the near post, flicked on by Charlton. It was Diara who errantly flicked it on, but it's worked out well for him because Goodmanson can bring it away. Over halfway, Pugh tracks back. 
as the two sevens clash. Puts the ball out of play with his tackle, but he's hurt himself, Mark Pugh. He's rolled his sock down below us in front of his manager, Eddie Howe. And he's just checking he's OK. Might have had a stud or two there, Willow. Yeah, he just slid in. He's just holding the back of his car. Eddie Howe, right in front of him, he is struggling, Mark Pugh. The referee's going to stop the game. Of course, Pugh could have gone off off the pitch, Willow, and they could have carried on, but he's led down a yard from the touchline. So, referee skips the ball. Leicester are leading again. Leicester won Newcastle nil. And Joa has scored for Leicester. They're shaking at the bottom of the Premier League table, that's for sure. That's the early kick-off at 3 o'clock on BBC Radio Solent. Sunderland against Southampton with Andy Moon and Dave Merrington. Also, Pompey against York. City is a three o'clock kickoff with Chris Wise and Guy Whittingham. And we've got live coverage of Havertz, Conference South playoff semi final, second leg, updates into that Pompey game throughout the afternoon. We'll preview it all and we'll react to it all between two and three and between five and six. And of course, we'll have reaction from here at the Valley as Bournemouth look to continue this wonderful, stylish end to the season here at Charlton where they lead 2 0. Pugh is off the pitch and getting treatment. Well, he's still hobbling now. I can't yeah. make up my mind whether... He won't want to come off, Willow, on this final no, day. No, of course he won't. No, no doubt about that, Mark. But... Steve Hart just uh, checking with him that he's OK. The fourth official's come out to have a look. We are just to the right of the halfway line here, and the halfway line is exactly where Chris Solly throws the ball back in from. Boyens lifts it down the right, headed out by Steve Cook. It'll be a chart and throw. The bat has advanced position as they've been all game, about three yards from the corner flag. Mark Pugh's back on as well. Hence the booze. Good news. And the pews. Well, that's pews. Yeah, the pews okay. from the Cherries vans and the booze from the Jarman vans. He's got that black tape. Looks like he's got suspenders on Willow down the back of his legs, Mark Pugh. Protecting his hamstrings. Has Charlton prepared to take this throw? Still not taken. Now it is into Diara. Back heel looking for Watt. And Watt can't gather it. Cherry's half clear. Bulo has it, been quiet so far, the Gabon international. Back to the tall, rangy, bald figure of Yoni Doyens, into Diara, who's also tall, rangy and bald. Back out to the left wing to Morgan Fox, the Welshman has Bulo ahead of him. Comes in field, approaching the Cherries penalty area, into the feet of Veta Kelly. Veta Kelly gives it back to Bulo, who shoots from distance, left-footed, but it bounces two or three times on its way to Arthur Boritz. And that's about as busy as Boritz has been. Well, I think they got about 13, 14 passes in there. Charlton just moved it around quite nicely. Didn't really hurt us. And now Charlie Daniels is Yeah, he's going to try and hurt Charlton because Pugh's lifted it cleverly over to him. Kerman gives it back to him, just uh, forces him back a yard, so the pace goes out of the move. And Daniels goes back inside to True Sermon, who always knew where the ball was going before it got to his feet. Played it back, it goes across. Now Francis has it on the right. Arta. Looks up with Boyens in front of him, onto his left foot, centre of the park, looking for a one-two, doesn't get it, but Kermit gives it back to him, he shoots! Might have been a handball claim there against Roger Johnson, as it hit his uh, body, obviously, according to Neil Swarbrick. It wasn't a big claim, but another fairly incisive move that threatened to open Charlton up down well, the middle. It, it was down the middle, and that's a surprising one, because it's most difficult to break teams down through the middle, but selection of one-twos, Final one, just coming off defender's body. Well, Elphick's clearance, he's poor with his head, it landed straight to Watt, but he actually gave it away, gave it back to Steve Cook. He said to Veta Kelly, why didn't you make that run for me? And the Angola looks at him to say, well, why didn't you just pass the ball to me? As Richie looks up from halfway on the right-hand side, in diagonally to Wilson, who holds off Johnson, pushes it back to Francis, they're inside the Charlton half. Sermon now brings it into Pugh. Neat layoff to Arter, and now on to Daniels, who's getting forward down the left. Daniels slides it to Pugh's, made an angled run towards the corner flag, tries to back heel it to Daniels, blocked, and Diara half clears, and it should be completed by Good Munson, who can't control, and it's out for a Cherries throw. 2-0 they lead, it's been a terrific first, uh, what, 34 minutes of the game, they've been imperious. Well, it has, you know, we could have had one or two more, really. Callum Wilson probably been the one who... Could have opened Charlton up. Diara, as Bournemouth give it away, slides it cleverly to Watt. Watt's through here, 20, 35 yards out, and then Steve Cook getting back with him. Oh, no. As again, the big Scotsman couldn't control the ball and sort of almost tripped uh, up over it. Well, he did, he's, he's looking for a foul as well, I can't yeah. believe. 
He's a big lad as well, he ought to have carried on. Well, I think he, he didn't have the legs to do it, Adam. No. Too much defending he's done in the first 35 minutes has finished well, him off. that is the problem and you have, and we've all been there. You know, anybody who's played football has come up against a football inside. And when you're chasing the ball around, you're asking your mates why. Why aren't we getting tighter? Why aren't you getting tighter? <laughs> because they're absolutely tortured us, and that's what's happening here today. It is. Cook swings it with a languid leg out to Simon Francis. Still 15 yards inside his own half. He dinks it cleverly onto the chest of Kermadon, who laid it down, and Richie's first touch gave it away. Boyens trying to capitalise. Ball to Veta Kelly, who can't get the ball, and he goes down. He was snipered by a ghost defender. Hamstring. Yeah, he's certainly clutching either his Achilles or his hamstring. Blackburn have equalised against Ipswich. Ipswich, of course, in the box seat, really, from the teams below them. Jordan Rhodes has got the Blackburn goal. But Veta Kelly looks in trouble here. Bradley Johnson's got another goal for Norwich. They lead by a goal to nil. So, just while we get this injury to Veta Kelly sorted out, I'll try and remember who scored. It's Wolves 1. Millwall nil, it's Forest nil, Cardiff two. Watford a 1 0 up against Sheffield Wednesday, remember, through Vidra. Derby are trailing 1 0 at home to Reading. Ipswich 1, Blackburn 1 at Ewood Park. Brentford lead Wigan, and uh, I think that's probably the lot. Middlesbrough Brighton then is still goalless, for sure. And Leeds Rotherham the same. Rotherham celebrated last week, of course. Blackpool, Huddersfield, the same, and Bolton, Birmingham. So the important goals, fifth place, Ipswich drawing 1-1. They started the afternoon on 78 points, ahead of Derby on 77 in sixth place, and they're trailing at home to Reading. So at the moment, Wolves leading Millwall by a goal to nil would go above Derby. Brentford, of course, who are leading 1-0 go above Derby and Norwich are now 2-0 up on Fulham Nathan Redmond has a second and uh, Fulham's leaky defence continuing to carry on its four 2-0 here, 2-0 to Norwich against Fulham and still Vettel Kelly gets treatment on the pitch which is sort of ruining the game these two injuries we've had Willow because it's taken the, the flow out of it well <coughs> I think from John's point of view it's done all a favour because they've been blown away. The lads limping here, but I, I don't. I don't think he's going to recover from this. No. It looked like when you say uh, nobody around him, usual suspects, snipers. Doesn't take a doesn't, doesn't take a lot on the final day to get get some players off the pitch. When you lose him two 0 and you haven't touched the ball for 35 minutes, and he's got certainly limping. Looks like a hamstring. To be fair to him, we've had a bit of a stoppage now, but we are going to have. Charlton's first substitution and no surprise that Simon Church will come on the Welshman of course, former Reading striker he's made 31 league starts so he's played a lot of the games Church but Watt and Better Kelly have been the preferred choice of Guy Luzon in recent weeks and he can hardly get off the pitch Better Kelly they should have got a golf buggy out to him Willow taking ages well, it seems like he's if he had pulled the hamstring he's done it big time it's really yeah. gone 11 goals for the Angolan for Charlton this season. He's done well for them. Former Bruges and Copenhagen striker and Simon Church, who will offer a much more physical, uh, aerial, direct threat, but less pace than Better Kelly. And they've now got two big men up front in Church and Watt. And the ball goes back to Arthur Boric. Kindly, after the Cherries put the ball out for him to get treatment. 2-0 to Bournemouth, 39 minutes tick over on the clock here at the Valley. And it's been a wonderful performance from Eddie Howe's side to round the season off so far. Richie and Arta within two minutes of each other, giving the Cherries early dominance. And a fair but reflection. The, giving I'm away a free looking, kick, by the way. Sorry, Adam, I'm just looking at him there. Why does he's gone down again there so easily? Sam and Francis is entitled to go for the ball. Why has he done that? The refs always buy it, don't they, when the striker drops as soon as he's touched. Well, there's not been many just dangerous spots. <laughs> 40th gonna, minute. Yeah, they're going to swing this one in with the left foot. Out yeah. swinger. Set piece out on that left-hand side. Here it comes. Whipped in. 
and then headed away by Tommy Elphick with interest back towards the halfway line and Goodmanson's free quick was a waste of time and it's back with Tal Ben Haim on to Chris Solly they're back inside their own half he just hits long now looking for Church and Johnson who was up from the back and Watt and uh, Roger Johnson's done nothing but complain for the first 40 minutes of the game and he's complaining again he's already been booked throw into Charlton on this near side that's their right almost level with the edge of the Bournemouth penalty area Solly takes it for Watt, who tries to cleverly move it away from Daniels, who just volleys it. Into the, into the linesman. Yeah. Luckily, the crown jewels weren't disturbed, so it was OK, just off his thigh. Mm. Charlie Daniels, of course, a Spurs youngster, plenty of games at Orient, back in London. We're looking forward to going to White Hart Lane in the Premier League. Ball chipped in, cleverly actually by Watt, but nobody approaching the back post, it drifts out of play for a Bournemouth goal kick, so... Four minutes till half time, Charlton nil, the Cherries two. And it's been easy, and frankly, it should be three or four, probably. Yeah, could be. It, it, it should be really in terms of chances, and also the way we've played has moved the bar all round rather good. <laughs> Better than rather good, I have yeah. to say. Immaculately. 97 league goals now for the Cherries. They're looking for another clean sheet. Boric has kept 15 this season since arriving in September. Lee Camp's kept three clean sheets. In the championship, he hasn't played for a long time in the league since September. An ill-fated game at Derby for him. It's Cook heads only as far as halfway to the tall, lanky figure of Alu Diara. Now Tony Watt, the former Celtic striker, passes it to Bulo, who came off his left wing but gave it away. And Arta tries to get the cherries going, just showed too much of it to Diara. And then Colonel gets caught by the Frenchman. And it's a free kick to the Cherries, right in front of the referee, and I think he says, that's your second, you're going in the book. I think he's saying, that'll do for me. And Alu Diara's fairly innocuous trip, cost him a yellow card, to be fair to him. What do you think? Well, it was a trip-up, wasn't it? Yeah. And, um, do you know, Adam, sometimes, as with the offside rule, I'm not sure I know anymore. I'm not, <laughs> you know, I see it, and I'll analyse it, and I think, well... You that was that wasn't a booking. That was a booking. But I don't know which is right from wrong. That was one of those where you think that's just the foul. It's I mean, that booking, just happens in football. You get fouled. I don't think people miss the ball. It was one of those. Coming up was just too quick for him. Just nicked it past him, that, and you, you get blamed for that. Well, so. but coming in mind as well the fact that Jan doesn't like to hit the floor a little bit. <laughs> well, he'll be enjoying it so far at his old club. He's been impressive. Well, it's done magnificent today. Signed. Only Willow about 16 months ago, January 2014. It seems he's been at the club longer than that as the ball goes out of play from he's Arthur. Just, he's trying to that, that role just to win behind Callum. I don't think I've seen him find as much space as he has done today. <laughs> yeah, he's been allowed a bit, hasn't he? That's for sure. He's now defending inside his own half. Charlton's throw with Chris Solly is just below us by the fourth official. And Solly, the young right back, throws it down the line, looking for Church. Tries to get his first touch. The tall blonde figure of Simon Church, bustled off it by Daniels. Blackburn a two-one up against uh, Ipswich. So a comeback from Blackburn. Come from behind to lead two-one up. That puts pressure on Nick McCarthy's side. Long ball forward by Tal Ben Hayim. Steve Cook makes no chance, uh, no risk with it, and just taps it out for a throw to Charlton. Well, he. He had to do it really, he was running out for the corner or the, the throw in. The throw in is about five yards from the corner flag now, and in the end, Bulo will leave it for Solly the right back again. He's got Watt on the edge of the box, Bulo heading towards the byline, Pew trying to keep an eye on him. He goes to Tony Watt, tries to nick it past Sermon. I didn't think Sermon touched him, but he's gone down very easily, Watt again. And he he's does, that's what I thought not long ago, and every time he gets. Anything on the ball, he hits the set, he hits the deck. Another player from Standard Liège, of course, Charlton owned by the Belgian businessman Roland Duchatelet, who also owns Standard Liège, there's all sorts of links. Duchatelet, the... is he French? He's Belgian. And, uh, of course, you've got uh, the managers worked in Belgium, Bob Peters, of course, the previous manager, there's all sorts of connections here. I won't bore you with them now, because Charlton have a free kick out on the right. Boric paces up and down on his line, 
It's going to get whipped in by Good Munson towards the back post, and it's a good header with a difficult, awkward angle by Tommy Elphick, who was almost craning his neck just to get it away. Richie and Pugh are there to help, and then Francis just whacks it up the pitch all the way to the far touch line towards Tao Ben Hai, who nods it back into the Cherries half. We're going to have four minutes of stoppage time, and Matt Ritchie's trying to end the half on a high. Just his pass for Daniels, intercepted by Good Munson. And Ritchie's full of energy, he comes over to this near side and thinks about taking it himself. And then changes his mind, Matt Ritchie, still only 25. He's got the first goal here. A beautiful sweeping move that Charlton, frankly, just couldn't live with and ended with a great finish. It, it, it was, uh, I mean, you know, it's hard to, to classify it in, in one, two, three or four, five until you see the others, but... It was like Mondays, but but with bells and whistles on and <laughs> cherry on the top. More passes as well, I think. Yeah, more passes and from deeper position, it had more depth yes, to it yes. and it was just beautiful. And you can look forward to that one in the Football League show tonight, that's for sure. 2-0. Four minutes. To four minutes. Extra. Do you know, sometimes in the opposing team, you can't wait to get in the changing room at half-time. I think this is one of the occasions Charlton can feel that way. Well, the shame is that Bournemouth haven't put them to bed even more, because no, I think true. the 100 goals was on, it still is, if they can get three in the second half, but yeah. 97 at the moment, 2-0 here, it could have been 5-0 by the time we'd had 25 minutes. Wilson could have had a hat-trick. It's just slowed down a bit, like I said, since the injuries. Leicester have doubled their lead against Newcastle in the Premier League, and defender Wes Morgan has scored. And that's a bad afternoon for Newcastle. Again, Solly's given it away. Wilson will pounce towards the penalty area. Slips it infield to Arter, near the edge of the D. Left of centre, Harry Arter waits for support. Gets it from Ritchie to his right. On to Kermigan, back to Sermon. He might fancy it from 25 yards, curls it! And it's just two yards wide, goal kick Charlton. Well, again, it's beautiful set-up play. This time it was the under... The tail end, sorry, of Andrew, just to try and clip it with his left foot. Away from the keeper, into the top corner. It wide. I was glad Harry Arter mentioned him earlier. I remember him taking criticism for people for passing the ball sideways, Andrew Sermon, in the season. 39 starts. Arter, he allows Arter to do what he does. He's always available, always free on the ball, and he always knows where it's going when he's got it. And he very rarely misplaces a pass, that's for sure. Shields that back four. And it's lobbed forward by Arter, hooks it high into the Charlton half. Tal Benheim heads it half away. Kermigan, reverse ball, clever back to Wilson. Left hand edge of the box, this time two defenders around him. Tal Benheim and Solly, they dispossess him. And Charlton will try and bring it away from their own half. Lumped forward by Morgan Fox. Long down that far touch line, and Elphick, right footed, will hook it back towards halfway. Richie doesn't keep it in. Charlton Athletic will have a throw. And we're approaching what? The. Um, We've had nearly three minutes of the four of stoppage time. Sermon, of course, played in the Premier League with Wolves and with Norwich. So he's a man of experience for the start of next season. It would just be interesting for me to see if he still plays 4-4-2 in the Premier League. That's the most interesting thing of the summer for me. When he decides you have to go three, like every, almost every team does, and match bodies. As Charlton give it away, Bulo again, not had a great half. He's not had a bad uh, season the second half of Gabon International, but this time a lovely ball from Daniels, forward to the feet of Wilson, middle of the park, support behind him from Pugh, who now sweeps it out to Kermigant on the right, Ritchie coming up on that right wing, across goes Fox to tackle him, Ritchie plays it back for Kermigant, Francis makes a run, that drags the defender, gives Ritchie some space, Ritchie finds Francis in turn, lovely move again, and this time it ricochets back off Francis from his cross and out for a goal kick, and another move that just needed the final ball and the finish. Yes, again, fine play. Matt Ritchie and Francis combining, just couldn't get the, the ball across goal, and unlec unlucky, un unlucky? You know what that is, mate. Unlucky. Is that when you run out of lucky on the metre? That's when it comes out. Yeah. That's the half-time whistle from Neil Swarbrick. Uh, uh, climax of the first 45 minutes. to savour more than we've already had in this game because the 45 minutes we've had would be enough for most fans I think in, in a whole game as Wilson tries to latch on to Kermigan's forward ball 
right hand edge of the box support from Richie decides to crack it early straight into Roger Johnson and he's appealing for a handball he's not getting that from that range because he drilled it at the player <laughs> and now Stephen Henderson has uh, a bit of ribbon caught up in his boots from the Cherries fans they're loving it it's like one of those uh, like rhythmic gymnastic ribbon things isn't it Willow yeah oh, a and another one. ball yeah and a, a little red and black ball um, and Callum Wilson has managed to miss with that ball put it out for a throw Brentford on course putting right pressure on Derby and Ipswich 2-0 up now here at the Valley the Cherries are 2-0 up we're in the first minute of the second half and Bulo finds Watt towards the Cherries penalty over Arter just steals it away from him and Sermon at the edge of his own D squares it to Daniels they're trying to get a way out Charlton certainly are pushing more pressure on Bournemouth at the start of this second half Willow, what are you looking at? Who's down? Bulo's down injured. But uh, Charlton will play on. Trying to come out with a bit of a pressing game, Charlton. They spent the first half watching Bournemouth play, but Diara's giving it away. He's been poor. And then the referee says, we're going to stop play. There is a player down it's injured. That sniper again, Adam. Nobody around him. I was just watching the ball, and he was nowhere near it. Nowhere near anybody tackling him. All of a sudden... Down he goes. It's not the best start to the second half, is it? Given that we might have another annoying stoppage. 2 0 up then, Brentford against Wigan. So that puts them on 78 points. Level with Ipswich, who are losing 2 1 at Blackburn. Norwich, of course, and Middlesbrough. They're going to be in the playoffs. Norwich are winning 2 0. Middlesbrough, Brighton, 0 0. Wolves will move up to 78 points. Level with Ipswich and level with Brentford as things stand goal difference yeah, it's going to come into it Wolves Brentford Norwich and Derby are on 77 points Derby are going to be not in the playoffs as things stand which is in that two-all draw at Dean Court earlier in the season Willow I thought they looked like a team with Darren Bent they'd added to their numbers and they looked like they were going to cruise the league well, certainly haven't it's been the case as you say and you do need a little bit of luck along the way. Yeah. Even though their strikers went missing, if I remember. He lose on his number much luck because uh, he's got another player off the pitch, and Simon Church might have another chart and change here. I think Church may be okay to go back on. Fourth official just uh, deciding. And the ball has ended up all the way back with Stephen Henderson, who is away to our right. Bournemouth playing from left to right in this second half towards. The majority of the 4,000 fans in that Jimmy Seed stand who've travelled from Dorset and from all over the country, I suspect. And the rest of them are just to our right, Willow, in the top of this stand with us. Three well, minutes into the second half. It's magnificent sport. Fair play all to Charlton for giving them extra tickets as well, Willow. Yes, fantastic job to nice do that. Nice touch, nice touch. Charlton keep the ball in on the right. They're certainly trying to add a bit of tempo to their own game. And Boyens has it, 30 yards out, slides it through, looking for the run was made by Church but having just recovered from an injury he wasn't up to it clearance from Boric was a little bit sloppy I have to say I tried to put Callum in quickly but yeah. never caught it no and good Munson's come off that right wing middle of the park turned a good ball out to Bulo below us Bulo looks up Richie tracks him he goes across the pitch to the top of the centre circle to Alu Diara right footed little flick from good Munson he's trying to play to be fair to him he was trying to play Solly in the right back but it was a uh, low percentage and it failed and Arta took over Francis just inside his own half hoists one down this right wing which is on the side Morgan Fox almost got the wrong side of him but then makes a good challenge says the linesman which is berating the linesman for that decision and Morgan Fox will get on with it into the feet of Simon Church cooking his back lays it short to Watt who's playing a bit deeper where Kermigant is and now to Bulo the Gabon International plays it short to Fox. The Welshman drills it across the pitch, 60 yards. Lovely ball as well to Good Munson. And he's got Solly on the overlap. Solly approaching the Cherries penalty area. Crosses early. Heads go up. Elphick wins the header. And it comes out towards Charlie Daniels, who doesn't win his header cleanly. Still play on, says the referee. Back to Good Munson. Dinks it into the penalty area. Borat stays on his line. It's chipped across the six yard box. And then the subsequent shot from Bulo hits Francis. And still the. African has it on this left wing it's a different Charlton now Fox back to Bullo looks up right footed header from Church goes up and out of the Cherries penalty area and Francis and Richie combine 
and this time there's another player down landed badly on his knee I don't like the look of that knee or ankle is clasping Bullock and Bullock I think his ankle I think he's claiming he was studied no, I don't, well I don't Adam again that was another one they just both jumped for the ball I think it's just landed awkwardly yeah I think he has as quite well. incredible that they can happen three times in well, ten minutes if he didn't have the half-time. But there is no doubt Guy Luzon has got into his players at half-time and they've come out pressing and playing with a bit more tempo. Yes, they have, but surely to goodness you would have expected them to have <laughs> one or two attacks this half. Yeah, Kermigan to Wilson just chatting beneath us, coming over for some water while another break for treatment happens. Eddie Howe chatting to Jason Tindall on the sidelines. Neither are interested in talking to Kermit than to Wilson. It's a bit crowded there, the assistant referees between them. And I think Bulo is going to be OK. Simon Francis checks on him. Frederick Bulo, another standard Liège link, of course, started his career at Monaco. Well, we do like to go down and in the first half he played like he was from Monaco yeah. I'm, just, I'm just wondering I, mean, I can't believe anybody goes down like that it doesn't come off the pitch and stays off I don't know when, how they get better yeah, magic sponge Willow you should know that Well, <laughs> clearance from Henderson is long volleyed back into the Charlton half by a big volley from Charlie Daniels headed up in the air by Roger Johnson towards halfway and then Steve Cook is too quick for Tony Watt volleys it back into the Charlton half ball doesn't Hardly touched the ground for 30 seconds. And Alu Diara gets hold of it. Goes back to Chris Solly. And Solly, who's a one club man, a 24 year old. Products of the Charlton youth. There's a good number of them in the squad. And Bournemouth get it back. And they're not getting the time on the ball. And Arter is hassled off it by Boyens. And then it comes off. Tommy Elphick challenge with Simon Church. And it's going to be a throw into Charlton. Midway inside the Cherries half. On the far touch line, that's the Charlton right. Another challenge comes in, this time from Mark Pugh. I think the referee's going to give a free kick for a handball. Yes, having not yes. given the Cherries a couple, I'm not sure how Mark Pugh was supposed to get out of the way of that from half a yard. But still, free kick out on the right. Eddie Howe's bar the army is the cry from the crowd, but it's the defending the Cherries having to do at the moment. Good Munson, left-footed. Drills it into the heart of the penalty area. Free header at the back post. Back to Diara, who heads it high and wide. It's a goal kick. To be fair to young Morgan Fox, he got up for a free header. Well, he did, and there's questions going on amongst the back four. Who's marking who? Always nice to see that after there's been a, a half chance. I like to see the players discussing who's picking who off and make sure it doesn't happen again. Goal kick for Arthur Boric. Joined in September, of course, 36 league starts. What a big signing he has proved to be, Willow. Yes, Boritz changed the complexion of the defence. No, most, he joined. most definitely. I had one game, I think, where perhaps things didn't go entirely his way, but apart from that, I can't remember many errors at all, really. Yeah, other players who aren't involved today, who've had the moments. Kilo Ranti scored a couple of league goals. Junior Stanislas isn't in the squad today either. He's got a goal in the league campaign. You don't know Kane's played his matches, of course. More than one sub at Derby from Darryl Flahaven this season as Simon Francis comes trotting down the right wing. Infield to Mark Hume, midway inside the Charlton half, looks towards the penalty area and Wilson. Goes short to Arter. Bang in the middle of the pitch at Harry Arter. Chips it back out to Simon Francis. Bulo's a bit slow to go with him and then he steps past Boyan's clumsy challenge. Short to Arter again, still it's central. Arter then pings it out to... Daniels, Daniels has Pugh ahead of him, edge of the penalty area. Cherry's taking the time and working something. Pugh being held up, twisting and turning away from Solly. Goes back inside to Arter again, 30 yards from goal. Square to Richie is coming field, only Francis next to him, he's got the ribbon caught round his boots. Simon Francis looks like he's running with a flaming trail. Wolves are 2-0 up against Millwall, and the tackle from Watt, deep inside his own half, eventually wins a throw off Francis, throw into Charlton, 2-0 to Bournemouth and Wolves are 2 0 up now as well. Well, a nice little passion sequence there, just as good as on our way. Didn't quite come off and... Still remember, Watford only one goal up. 
So, an equaliser from Sheffield Wednesday changes the top of the table. And Blackburn a 3-1 up against Ipswich. It's a dangerous fixture always for Ipswich, wasn't it? But 3-1 up, guess Dead's got one. Ipswich now under pressure, massive pressure. Watford still only one up against Sheffield Wednesday. Here it is 2-0 to Bournemouth, but Charlton making a game of it in the opening ten minutes of this second half. Even if about three of those have been injury breaks. Charlton have it again. Long ball early, looking for Church's run down that right-hand channel. Intercepted by Cook. Pugh helps him out. Daniels to his left, wide on that far touch line. Springs away from Solly. And I think this has certainly been a rocket for the Charlton players as Kerman gets a flick on and a little trip from Wilson. Caught Roger Johnson's heels. He wasn't trying to, but he's tap tackled him. And Johnson's gone down. And it's a free kick to Charlton as Millwall 2 1 back at Wolves. 2 1 there. So more nerves at Molyneux. They've just been celebrating going 2 0 up and hearing Ipswich go 3 1 down. And then one goal. And now there'll be nerves at Molyneux. No nerves here for Bournemouth, Willow. No, no I, was just, I was just thinking he wouldn't mind tripping uh, Roger Johnson up there, and quite right it was. The ball goes out of play again, just got a little bit scrappy the last five minutes or so. Yeah, throw into Charlton into the thigh of Boyens, gives it back to Fox. Morgan Fox looks for a 1 2. Francis intercepts it. Bournemouth have done well. The Cherries pick possession at Pew, then forward to the halfway line, but Kermigan. Miscontrols it for once. Well, of all people. Yeah, comes back to Solly. He gives it away. Arter, base in the centre circle, drives forward over halfway, looks for an early ball to try and get Wilson in behind. Tal Ben Haim doesn't do so, but Tal Ben Haim's header only went as far as Pew, and then Arter's getting in there. Johnson with a big sliding tackle. Referee said he got the ball and he needed to, otherwise he was off the pitch. Got to Johnson, booked in the first half, and then Church as well working back inside his own half to win the ball back for Charlton. He's tackled by Cook, and Cook with a beautiful back heel. <laughs> completely changes the direction of the game and gets Cherries on the attack. Oh, I've seen three fellas go up the turnstile there as well, <laughs> just because he's done that great, good of skill. Richie on the right, tracked by Fox, has to come back towards halfway. Again, trying to make some time for himself, not given any by the young Welshman. And Elphick gets it back off Arter. Cherry's just trying to get a bit more control on the game, Willow, after the first ten minutes. They haven't done a lot. Cook, then, with one of his big diagonal balls. It's a beauty to Richie. Richie's done Fox in the box. Left-footed, deflects off the post. And it'll be cleared away by Solly as it's spun off the post and bounced back down into play. Nobody in a blue and black shirt just to tap it home. What Lovely play. But what a first touch from what Richie. What a first touch. <laughs> that was dream boaster. That was straight out of FIFA. As this time a tackle looked like a foul on Good Munson, he chips it back into the penalty area. Church hits it on the turn, good volley, blocked by Arthur, balloons away for a corner to Charlton. The game has suddenly turned up. Well, right to the other end, it was Matt Ritchie who had the first chance. What a touch it was out the sky. But now Charlton have a corner. It's going to be a left footed in swinger. Two underneath the keeper. Four big lads flying in from the edge of the box. Dream touch from Matt Ritchie. Corner taken short. Now it's going to be put in by Goodmanson. The second time of asking, flicked across the penalty area again. This time by Solly, who's got his hands on his head, and Bournemouth eventually get clear, but only as far as Boyens. And then Bullo is fouled, but Boyens is going to play on, and Elphick stretching can't stop them. Francis down the right, big challenge by Francis on Fox. Keeps the ball in, and then he gets a sliding challenge off Fox. Francis still going. Fox comes back to have another nibble at him. Referee says play on. Richie's caught as he plays it. Three on three. from Neil Swarbrick. It is three on three. Arter driving over the centre circle. Pew to his left. Arter will shoot, and what a waste. Wilson's furious. Pew's furious. And Arter apologises. Goal kick Charlton. Well, we're going to have a change, Adam. Gosling is going to make an appearance here. Anybody else down there? No, it's just going to be the one substitution. Yeah. I'm wondering who somebody's got a knock or. Yeah, we will find out. Dan off. Gosling, he's coming on. Harry's not. It is Harry Arter. But no, that's what he shot there, that's for sure. He knew he was coming off. Yes. He had a player to his left who had a, a run in on a, a goal in Mark Pugh. 
but he elected to shoot. Well, he walked past his manager, they've got a handshake, there's a little pat from Eddie Howe. Can't believe for a minute he would be happy about coming off against his old club when he's playing like he is, Willow, having scored. Well, I don't know really, maybe they just got a little enough or something. He looked fine rushing forward and shooting. His cook clears, right-footed. Might just be uh, Eddie Howe wants Gosling to have the match time. Amazing, really. Dan, when Dan Gosling arrived in, back in the summer, Willow, we thought, oh, Premier League player, he's going to be the man in the middle of the park to change things for the Cherries. He's had one league start. Yes, it is quite a strange one, as you say. What it's done is it's up to the levels of the others as Wilson gets down the right, checks, twists past the defender twice, twisted bloody hat, pew at the back post, heads it down. Tao Ben Haim volleys away and Charlton trying to get out their own half with Good Munson. And he's done well, shrugs off two tackles. Second one from Gosling. Fox into the feet of Watt on halfway. Sermon slips as he tries to tackle him, tries to stay with him. Watt's turned and he's running directly. He's gone past three. Watt's still going. Good ball towards Church and well read by Charlie Daniels. Tucked in from left back, saw what was happening and slid to intercept the ball. Yes, yeah, great bit of work there and Gosling just finishes it off. Puts the ball into San Francis and now we try to start a move going forward again. But Charlton coming into the game a wee bit. Should open up for Bournemouth, though, the more Charlton push to get back into it. 62 minutes approaching on the clock. 2-0 to the Cherries on BBC Radio Solid Sport. Two goals in two minutes. And Richie and Arter setting up what was, frankly, a procession in the first half. Second half been a bit more of a contest. Great run there by Kerrigan. Diagonal running, found by Francis, approaching the box on the right. Early ball volleyed into the penalty area, away by Tao Ben Haim. Oh, Richie tempted the shot. In the end, he dinks it to the back post, and Pew can't get there. Solly did well to stay in front of him and just usher it back to his goalkeeper. Well, it's almost as if they're trying to invent ways to get themselves in. Just a straight clip and shot isn't enough at the moment. Little chips and drag back to the order of the day. After the game here, the Bournemouth players will go off the pitch. Charlton's players and their fans will uh, share some love for a few minutes. And then when Charlton are gone, Bournemouth will come back out to celebrate with their fans, which is good. And the ball played forward early for Simon Church. And Church has run the channels quite well. He's not going to get that one. Forrest is off his line quickly. But uh, certainly Church has offered a threat in the second half. Yes, he has, but... Um... Not a very big one, that's no. <laughs> Here, Bournemouth attacking again. Wilson can put pressure on Tao Ben Hayim, who hooks it away for a throw to the Cherries. Lots of fans backed up behind that goal, lots to our right, terrific atmosphere. The game's been done, really, ever since the two quick goals, but uh, Cherries need to put this to bed. Sermon, edge of the box, tangles with the leggy Diara, who wins out, and Watts tries to spin away from Cook. They then race together back into the Cherries' half as Good Munson tries to play Watt back in over the top and the ball just stopped in the grass, but Elphick got a touch and puts it out for a throw to Charlton. He certainly, with the direct running of Watt and Church, have offered Elphick and Cook a little bit of a challenge in the second Yeah, game. a little bit. They've got a bit, through a bit more work and made things a little bit more precarious, but not a great deal. Ball infield, midway inside the Cherries' half, but given away by Good Munson. Now Gosling gets a decent touch on it, just short of halfway. Simon Francis, full of energy and running, comes driving in towards the penalty area, chips it to the back post, curb against edge, just gone too far, back in towards Wilson, and Ben Hayim hacks it away with Henderson diving and panicking close by, thinking he had to smother it. The Israeli international took no chances, and Boyens sends it long, looking for Church, and a lovely cushioned header by Elphick. Yes, Awkwardly running back towards his own goal. Just to help his mate out there, excellent stuff. Look stuff you like to see between the two centre-halves. Again, though, we're just having a spell out of them where it seems a matter of time before we score again. Let's hope so. 20th minute of the second half, 2-0. Richie waits just over halfway and Francis takes over. Watt, showing some energy, closes him down. <laughs> and the match of the day theme is getting sung again. This is quite nice. Yeah, enjoy this at home, the ball being played around the back four. I've got just one to mention as well, 
Stefan in Hong Kong, another massive former player. You can mention that in a minute because Sermon's taken advantage of Richie's great pass in the box. Back to Richie, 25 yards out, into the feet of Wilson. Holds off, Johnson, lovely ball to Sermon. Sermon short to Richie, they're trying to walk it into the net. Richie now with his back to goal, 20 yards out. Has to wait for support from Francis. Into the feet of Wilson again. Wilson spins apart away from Johnson, into Sermon, 12 yards out. Shot deflects to Pugh. Pugh dummies the shot, tries to thread it through for Daniels on the overlap. It was all very intricate, and in the end they didn't test the keeper. 2-0. Very, very intricate. Trying to get passes. One-twos inside the box there. Just needed somebody to put their foot through it. 2-0, 66 minutes gone. The Cherries lead. Kermigan from deep again. Has Pew to his left, approaching the Charlton box. Once more into Wilson's feet with his back to goal. Got a 1-2 with Bullo, luckily. Was back to Richie. His first touch is clever. Then Gosling gets a touch. Wilson back to Kermigan to drill it, and Diara blocks it well. Jumped in front of it, Alu Diara. And Charlton will try and bring it away. I think Kermigan said something to him after he hit him with it, you know, there. Just followed it up. Yeah. Maybe no love lost between the two Frenchmen, who knows? He might have clashed before. Not that Diara's played that much football. Like I said, and the bollocks is clearance. Just goes straight to Watt, 40 yards out. Tony Watt looks up. Midway inside the Cherries half. Sermon just shadowing him. He swings it out to the right wing to Solly. He's gone on his bike as he's passed it back and field to Goodmanson. Exchange passes again. Now Boyens comes close. Wolves have settled the nerves there. 3-1 they lead now. And Ebanks Landau's got the goal there. Here, Charlton trying to get some sort of foothold in the game, have possession just short of halfway. On this near left wing for them, but the ball to Fox from Bullock was poor and Francis took it away. Pugh now in the centre circle. Again, Daniels gets up on his left and he finds Charlie Daniels. Pugh then goes ahead of him. Daniels has... The defender in front of him plays it into the feet of Wilson in the box, but Johnson just about used enough strength to get the ball off him. And Charlton trying to clear, do well through Church. Across goes Cook, he has to get there first, he does. And he runs it out of play for a Charlton throw, 2-0 still. Well, good covering by Cookie. It was important that he helped his mate out. All right, nothing was much ahead of them. But just knocking out with the throw-in was a big help. Going to see some changes, Mark Pugh. Adam Smith's coming off for Adam Smith, he's going to get a run out. Well, so Mark normally... Pugh's season ends, Harry Arter's season has ended. What Both been magnificent. It's Mark Mitchell goes on the left-hand side, yep. Smith will play just in front of Francis. Mark Pugh takes the applause of the fans and the cries of Pugh go out. Nine goals this season. Well, 299th league start of his career, and he's had a great five years at Bournemouth last well, year. I think that could be the best season of his career so far. So, second sub, Smith to Pugh. We're going to see Gomez, young defender, on for Charlton, as again the game comes to a big stop. Charlton making a double sub here, because... Chris Eagles is going to come on as well. You think you'd give him a bit more than Bullock. Bullock's given him, wouldn't you? Chris Eagles. Well, so. former player of Eddie's at Burnley. Or Burnley, yeah. Gomez is on. And, uh, he will take a position up on the right hand side. Now. I didn't see if Gomez has come on for Goodmanson or for Solly. I'm pretty sure he's come on for Solly, he has. Charlton have possession on halfway. Arter finishes the campaign with nine goals after his goal in the first half. Fans player of the year, it's his 43rd start of the season. Remember that spell in December, Willow, when he couldn't stop scoring? Five in six games, that massive goal at Wolves as the substitute makes a name for himself or tries to by having a whack at goal from the edge of the Cherries penalty area. It's gone into the fans behind the goal. It's a goal kick to Cherries. Take it quickly in. Yes, I do remember them goals, Adam, and it's nice to see him get the other ones to finish the season off today. And the and game for him, probably the best season in his warmest shirt. So Pugh and Arter resting up can reflect on the sidelines. Smith, who's just come on the pitch, gets his first decent touch into Sermon. 
Cherries have possession at the base of the centre circle inside their own half. Now taken over halfway by Daniels. Ritchie is over on the left. Early ball in towards Wilson. Scuffed it. And it's cleared by Tal Ben Haim, but another aimless clearance by the Israeli international who had time just to step in front of Wilson and play it out. Didn't. Cherries take possession up. Dan Gosling. It just seems odd, doesn't it? Five goals in the League Cup, but only one league start. I thought he didn't expect that when he came here. And it's well, cleared by Charlton again. Yes, yeah, sorry. It, it, it was, you know. I mean, he only started his, his career at Plymouth, I think, and then went yeah. to Everton. Yeah, and Newcastle and uh, Bournemouth. He probably thought he'd get coming to Bournemouth for regular football, Willow. Well, it's hard to get in the first team here. We can see it is that. now. Francis just inside the Charlton half. Forward to Dan Gosling. Gosling pushes it wide to Adam Smith. Support from Francis inside him. Midway inside the Charlton half. Curl towards the back post. Richie's the man over. Richie has Gomez coming to him eventually, but he flicks it into Daniels, who shoots left footed and just past the post. The goalkeeper couldn't touch it, and Daniels almost got two in a few weeks. Well, again, it was a lovely little flip by Matt. Flicked it into Charlie's path, but couldn't keep it on, keep it on target. Who'd have thought this? Derby nil, Reading two. Hector has scored for Reading. More famous Hector, Kevin Hector, used to play for Derby in the great teams. Well, he did, of course, yeah. that's right. So Derby are trailing. They're out of the playoffs, this thing, Stan Willow. Unbelievable. Derby 2-0 down at home to Reading. Here, Bournemouth cruising 2-0 up at Charlton. We're into the final 20 minutes of the season. As Henderson has to clear for Charlton left-footed. It's a left boot through it. Sermon brings it down on the volley, but can't cushion it enough to stop it going out ahead of Adam Smith. Thrown early by Fox. Good nudge in field from Church, but no one can get on the end of it. And Bournemouth will have it again. Matt Ritchie, Gomez facing him, the young product, Charlton Academy product. And this time Gosling looks up and he sprays the ball over. I thought it was going to be perfect, but over Adam Smith and out for a throw. Yeah, just a, a wee bit too much height on that one, plenty of pace and accuracy apart from the height. Do you know what? Brett Pittman will be itching to get on, won't he? 13 league goals this season, six goals in March, he got massive month March was and Pittman played a huge part in that, including that hat-trick of course. And Blackpool just chipped forward by Charlton and dealt with by Steve Cook at the back with no fuss and Elphick and Sermon. There's that little defensive triangle in the middle of the park, combining again for the umpteenth time as Boric clears, twists it back out to the left wing. Gomez is a lot taller than Ritchie, he wins the header, and it's out for a Bournemouth throw inside their own half. Perhaps Bournemouth now perhaps given up any designs on the 100 goals, Willow, that would have been the motivation, I think, at half-time, three more. But Charlton well, started well. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they've, you try to, to score as often as you can, but Oh, he's getting the, the boys getting scrapped. Another one. What? I know it's it's uh, it's May. Is that it nine months? Well, is it testimony to the way they had to been, work? Well, had to work and been given the run round by us. And he's run out of substitutions, by the way. He's used all three of them. Gilu's on. So what? He's going to have to hobble and struggle and get on with it and man up. Cardiff are leading at Nottingham Forest comfortably. We know that, but they're down to ten men because Marshall, the goalkeeper, is off. So, chance for Forrest to get back into that game, possibly. Applause around the ground, I'm just looking at what for. Eddie Howe and Jason Tindall still discussing and chatting. Have they got much to say at this stage of the season? Well, they're promoted, they're winning 2-0. Are, are they genuinely talking tactics or are they just deciding what they're having for supper? <laughs> I can assure you there's always something to talk about football-wise. And while there's... What's on that clock, Ad? I can't quite know it. Well, I reckon we've got uh, of normal time. We are now entering the last 15 minutes of the season. 15 minutes of the season. What a season it's been. Absolutely incredible. It's coming off this point. I think Charlton could be down to 10 men through cramp. Tony Watt is coming off. He's struggling. I think the pace of the first half is yeah, well, finishing Charlton. We absolutely off. tortured them. I mean, I was joking when, when I said. Charlton could have done with another ball so they could have a kick, but it was like that at times. We moved them round in, in such a fashion that they didn't know they were coming and going. 
and he's saying he's actually saying to the manager, "No, I'm off. I can't come back on." He's actually giving him the old no. Oh, yeah, I'm gone. He's giving no, no way. He's not saying it's cramp. He's saying I'm gone. He's, he's now got an injury, not just cramp. So Tony Watt uh, gets a pat off his manager, and he limps off. And Charlton will play the last 15 minutes here at the Valley with 10 men. But I think if I had to put that in written form, <laughs> with a brackets injury next to his name, it would be Tony Watt substituted brackets knackered. <laughs> Leicester are three 0 up against Newcastle. I think we can safely say that Newcastle are in danger of heading towards the relegation trap door. Their season is collapsing. Leicester fighting brilliantly for their lives. Me and Mr Jones having a bit of a warm up down there. Yeah. I think Brett Pittman thinks he's more worthy of it, wouldn't he? Um, Church on the left wing for Charlton. To manage somehow to go through two defenders, get some support. He's held up. Substitute Chris Eagles gets his first decent touch on the ball. Shows his skill, which we know he has. Seems to have been around for so long, he's still only 29, Chris Eagles. Someone from Blackpool, of course, the Exodus, as they save costs at the end of the January window. Sermon has it, Cherries have it back. Daniels bombing down the left wing, Goodmanson struggling to stay with him. Got Richie outside him, across goes Gomez. Richie crosses early to the back stick, it goes over Kermigan. Will come out for Adam Smith on this right hand side. Smith at walking pace, looks for options, takes Fox on down the byline, checks back onto his left foot, has to use Francis's support. He chips it up to the chest of Wilson in the box and then runs on. Francis pulls it to the back post. Oh, what a shame. He's got too much on it, he's taken the wrong club. And it went over Richie's head, and Charlton will clear their lives. And it just needed somebody to walk onto Richie's cross and tap it in. It did. It was just a wee bit too, too high. But here comes Charlton down the right hand side now, trying to break on it. I just had a, an, an image of Simon Francis hitting that home from an arrow angle. Now attacking down the far side of Charlton, and Church can't get a cross. Elphick who stays strong, and the ball through to Boris. And they roll it out for them. The home fans, at least, um, being generous to their team, applauding their efforts in the second half. Yeah, they are. I think they acknowledge a lot of our play in the first half as well. Yeah. Smith looking for Wilson down the right, trying to get the return ball. Wilson can't just get the ball out from under his feet. And it's dealt with by a combination of Boyens and Johnson. And now Chris Eagles coming in field. Leaves it in the end for Solly. Norwich three for them now. Norwich looked like finishing in third. Middlesbrough still goalless, as far as we know. Ipswich have pulled one back at Blackburn. It's 3-2, Murphy from the penalty spot. So, possible late drama there with about 12 minutes to go. That's what there is left here. No drama, we don't think, here. 2-0 to the Cherries. Cruising into the Premier League. They are cruising at this moment in time. I almost don't want the season to end, but no. we've seen the first half has been such a good performance, but... I think the, the season's taken its toll on Charlton. They're down to ten men. Three of their lads have walked off with cramp or hamstring injuries. Difficult to see. Yes, it's not been the most impressive show of fitness. Brentford 3-0 up against Wigan now. So they've got the three points. I'm going to let Rose have a check of the live table and tells me who's making the playoffs at the moment. A sermon bursts down the right wing. We don't say that very often. Andrew Sermon... Back to Francis, Smith's there as well. Adam Smith goes past Chris Eagles, showing good strength, stays on his feet, into Francis in the box, back heel, back towards Smith, too many red shirts in the way. Roger Johnson will clear it and gets it up towards Simon Church. Strong tackle from Tommy Elfie, but Church ends up with the ball until Simon Francis comes back 40 yards and takes it away from him when he didn't see him coming. Well, it was almost as if that was time to happen. Perfect timing by Francis to get this tackle in. Another score I've got to give you, I think. Wolves 3-2 against Millwall now. Phil Pop from Millwall. And Norwich 3, Fulham 1. Matt Smith has scored for Fulham. Still Wolves advantage. I get Rose to tell me who's in the playoffs and who's missing out. Because I know Derby are missing out. I haven't quite worked out in my head the Brentford Ipswich Wolves triangle yet. As Kermigant does well to win the ball back for the Cherries in the Charlton half. Out on the wide right is Smith. Smith approaching the box, two defenders in front of him. Wilson's come deep and outside the penalty area. Turns away from Boyens. Wilson might have a shot in here. In the end, he plays it out to Ritchie on the left. Ritchie support from Sermons. Now Smith has come infield. Francis trying to stretch the play. 
Eagles in front of him, Francis looks up. Clever ball round the corner for Gosling, who's taken up an advanced position. Back to Smith. Richie's now come off the left wing. Francis again tried to turn it past Fox, but couldn't throw into the Cherries. So it's Norwich third, Middlesbrough fourth at the moment, Brentford fifth and Ipswich sixth. So Derby missing out, of course, as Cherries play a nice one, two, and then Gosling can't get the shot away from just inside the penalty area. I thought that was going to be number three. Yeah, me too. It was a great bit of passing all the way through the middle of the defence. Might have been a foul there by Tommy. Yeah, Tommy did well. He went strong into the back of Church, who lost the ball, and then Richie tries one of his long-distance fizzers, and it rather fizzles out and goes behind for a goal kick into his own fans, though. They're celebrating, 81 minutes gone. You can have your thoughts, of course, get your final thoughts for the season in, Cherries fans. Get him into Willow for the end of the show. 8-1-3-3 on the text, putting Solent as the first word, please. Or tweet us at Solent Sport. And Jan Kermigant gets applause from all round the valley, from the fans who support him now, to the fans who used to support him when he was a Charlton player. He taps his heart with his hand to the Charlton fans to show his love for them. His season finishes, Jan Kermigan. 15 league goals for the Frenchman this season. And he has had a mighty campaign, the 33-year-old. Yeah, it's been a fine campaign, as you say. Couldn't have asked for much more than that. The two boys, him and Callum, you know, orchestrated with some crosses from wide positions, have done ever so well. It's, uh, I have to say, there's no sentiment from Eddie Howe we know he's a calculating man, as is a foul. Looks like a foul, certainly, on a Cherries player. Out on that far side, Dan Gosling, referee says he got the ball, but you would have thought Brett Pittman might have been the one, given that he's played such a bigger role in the season and this sort of celebratory afternoon, but Eddie Howe's gone big man for big man, I'll keep it as it is. On yeah, comes Ken Wynne-Jones for his sixth sub-appearance. Yeah, well, perhaps he just sees it. I'm just well, going to see if they've gone three at the back here, Adam. We've got to a wing-back situation. That might have been a reason for it to happen. Maybe. Richie slips, but he manages to get the ball forward to Wilson. Wilson is just fouled by Tal ben Haim, who didn't touch the ball. A free kick at the top of the centre circle. Two Charlton players too close to it. Well done, Neil Swarbrick, for letting the Cherries carry on. Wilson plays it out to Smith now. Plenty of blue and black shirts advancing. Richie, clever ball first time for Francis, gets a return ball, Richie's back on the right wing, Richie crossing from the right wing, but too close to Henderson, and the Irishman grabs it out of the sky, and the danger over for Charlton, just need another goal in front of their own fans, Willow, to finish it off for Bournemouth. Yes, that would be the icing on the cake, wouldn't it? I think we've we've deserved it, if not for what we've done the whole season, the, the first half display was absolutely magnificent. We've had chances to, to perhaps do it, we just haven't got that final ball in that's been good enough to cause the goal. And just remember, everybody, it is still, as far as I know, only 1-0 to Watford against Sheffield Wednesday. Henderson right-footed. Could there be a late twist in the Cherries' favour? Long clearance and Cook will deal with it. Goes back to Arta Boric, doesn't need to do one of these diddly-dees. And then Francis lets it run across his body and takes Boyens out of the game beautifully. Slightly dangerous in front of your own penalty area, but after the season he's had, you back him every time. Smith off the right wing, approaching the Charlton penalty area. Back to Francis on the right. Good rotation and movement from Francis. Here's Gosling, 25 yards out. Can't get the pass through to Wilson. He just fluffed the pass, really, but he might get it back. And now Wilson has, and then a lunging challenge from Solly. Only goes as far as Daniels. Doesn't shoot. Clever pass. Richie in the box. Gets it out from under his feet. Shoots again! <laughs> Matt Richie! Started the afternoon, he's finishing the afternoon. He punches the sky and celebrates with the Cherries fans and his players. They've got their goal in front of them, the 4,000 happy fans. And Matt Ritchie has 15 for the season in the championship. He gets better and better, and now the party can start. Well, it really can. We just want that extra one just to finish things off and confirm. Matt's come and got it. Not enough for Andrew Sam, and he sprinted towards the goal, picked the ball out the back of the net, and put it on the. Top. What have they? Have they drew? Adam, I think there must be a goal at Watford. Cherries fans are celebrating. We'll get news. It is 1-1 at Vicarage one Road. Vicarage what a Road. minute in the Championship season. Matt Ritchie scores, and Sheffield Wednesday equalise at Vicarage Road within seconds. Bournemouth 
at top of the championship table with five minutes to go at the Valley. Quite amazing turn round. Absolutely fantastic news. Now we just need the Sheffield Wednesday to do us a favour. While we're on the attack. Kenwin Jones is trying to get in on the act. Edge of the box on the right, cuts in towards Wilson. Solly makes a good challenge. Wilson wins it back. Wilson in the box. Has support from Smith. Chips it across. And Gosling misses. Shot from Daniels. Great save. Henderson corner Bournemouth. What a save that was from the keeper. Charlie Daniels thought he'd got another goal, Willow. Two on the ball. He's only got the one, of course, against Birmingham. The volley into the ground that came went back in under the crossbar. And the Bournemouth have a chance to be champions of the championship. They could really go up in style here. They want the ball back. Why Henderson's making them wait, I don't know. It's not like Charlton have got to worry about goal difference. Watford won, Sheffield Wednesday won. It was uh, old Nahui with the goal, the Sheffield Wednesday striker. He could be a hero. There's a corner for Bournemouth here. When the ball goes out of play, we'll go for team news at the Stadium of Light. 3-0 to the Cherries. 1-1 at Vicarage Road. Drama and a late twist at the top of the championship. Plenty of drama in the playoffs as well. As this outswinging corner will come in now from Gosling. Left-footed, not cleared of the first from Church. Cherries will keep the pressure on. Good tackle from Sermon. Smith slips but keeps the ball. Then he's fouled. It will be a free kick. Let's get the team news in the stadium alike. Andy Moon. Thank you, Andy. Free kick taken short. Back heel from Kenwin Jones. Ball at the edge of the penalty area. Good tackle from Roger Johnson. Chris Eagles needs to bring it away for his side. But the blue and black shirts are swarming all over chart. And they're playing like it's the first minute again, Willow. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic in the way they're closing down. But Charlton just got us on a bit of a break on this race outside of the pitch. Two and a half minutes of normal time to go. Good Munson comes in field, trapped all the way by Daniels, can't get a shot away from 30 yards, has to go wide. Gomez puts the cross in over everybody. Francis will volley it clear for the Cherries. It bounces over halfway. Wilson has three red shirts with him, but he has the ball. Wilson checks. He's got support to his left now from Kenwin Jones. Smith ahead of him to his right. Ritchie coming up behind him. Smith looking for a clever ball to Ritchie. Strong challenge from Roger Johnson. Gets it away from him. And then Smith grapples with Boyens as Charlton win a free kick and Bradley Johnson has a second for Norwich it's four and I think Sheffield Wednesday might have scored again or it's full time at Vicarage Road we will find out Richie with a big smile it is full time at Vicarage Road 1-1 between Watford and Sheffield Wednesday and Tommy Elphick punches the sky with both hands the Cherries are going up as champions 3-0 leaders here Matt Richie screams yes to the sky Jan Kermanent on the sidelines, celebrates, punches as well, Mark Pugh hugs Ryan Fraser. Bournemouth are going to go up as champions and title winners in the championship as they head to the Premier League. Long clearance here, but it's all about the atmosphere, it's all about the fans celebrating, and now it's about the title. Well, quite incredible, with all the work that's been put into this operation especially for the supporters, as you can hear them here today. It's going to be fun after the game down on the pitch. Charlton try and push the ball towards the Cherries' penalty area, but the Cherries on course for another clean sheet. Fulham have got a consolation at Norwich, it's 4-2 at Carrow Road. I'll get Rose to recheck the table for me for the playoff positions as well. It is finished 4-2 to Norwich, they'll be third, Middlesbrough will be fourth. Ipswich were trailing 3-2 at Blackburn, of course. Derby being hammered at home to Reading 3-0. Brentford winning, Wolves are winning. What does that mean for the top six positions? Norwich, Middlesbrough, third and fourth. Watford, second. Champions, Bournemouth have possession on the right-hand side in front of us. Smith to Francis, to the byline. Pulls it back, Wilson's header misses the post by a yard. Blackburn 3, Ipswich 2 is a full-time score. We've got three more minutes of on-pitch celebrations because that's how much stoppage time we've got here 
That's a high five between Francis and Smith. And now, all the Cherries players and staff beneath us, even Jason Tindall, looks up and punches. Eddie Howe is happy, you'd expect, but understated as always. The fourth official has come over to talk to the Cherries bench. Eddie Ward celebrates with staff. And Tommy Elphick gets a touch to Andrew Sermon, which gives the ball away. Good Munson won it back, and then good work from Dan Gosling recovered it for Bournemouth. They're still defending, and Sermon's limping as he stands up. He's only got another couple of minutes or so. Brentford have won 3-0. They'll be in the playoffs, their fifth. Gosling bursting forward for the Cherries. Gosling trying to go past Boyens. Still going 30-yard run from Dan Gosling. And to be fair to the Belgian, he stuck to his task and won it back. Only as far, though, as Charlie Daniels. He decided to go the whole way, Gosling. No yeah. doubt about it. He wasn't going to stop. Yeah, good work from Daniels and Richie again. Daniels on the edge of the box. Richie inside. Richie on a hat-trick. Dinks a left footer across the box and selfishly. Smith plays it back to Wilson. And the ball comes off his shin. And it bounces away, and he looked like he might have had his goal, but he hasn't. And Charlton will try and break. Brentford a fifth. I think at the moment, Ipswich a sixth. 90 seconds left. Back to Church, edge of the box. Church to Goodmanson over the bar. Wants a corner, gets a corner. Borat's got a touch, and the clean sheet is still intact. Cherry's winning 3 0 here. It has finished 1 1 between leaders Watford and Sheffield Wednesday. And the Huey late goal has given the Cherries the title, as well as their 3-0 win here, don't forget, their magnificent performance, which thoroughly warrants it. Cross from the right for Charlton after the short corner, headed away by Simon Francis. So, Brentford and Ipswich currently joining Middlesbrough and Norwich in the playoffs. Derby missing out, as are Wolves in their first season up, of course. Here it is 3-0, it is comfortable, it is party time and it is celebration at the Valley as Chris Eagles attacks down the right, does well, crosses to the near post. Steve Cook in the right place at the right time, back it comes to Good Munson, he's shot blocked by Sermon, offside flag goes up, it'll be a free kick to Bournemouth. And 92 years after the joining the Football League, the Cherries will head into the Premier League and become the latest of the 92 clubs to enjoy the elite league in world football and take all the glory and money that goes with it and complete the turnaround from the dark days that they've had more than once at this club, from the minus 17, from the bucket collections, from everything else that's gone on. Remember the money even raised to bring Eddie Howe to the, back to the club as a player, Willow. All well, the sorts have gone on. amazing challenge for everybody concerned. That is it! Neil Swarbrick brings the game to an end.
This way! Yes! Jeff Boston, Bournemouth chairman. Yeah. Monday, incredible. What about yeah. today? It's just uh, it's sensational. You know, who could have imagined that Sheffield Wednesday would go and do exactly the same to Watford as they did to us? I think that's poetic justice. I think these boys absolutely deserve to be champions. I don't think it was enough going up, although it was for me. I wanted that medal for the boys. Just incredible seats. And what a display today. That style of football would grace any division. And I think that the Premier League um, are going to be absolutely graced by our boys next year. Very well done, thank you. Well done. Sorry, mate. Well done. Very Thank well you. done. Thank How you. does that feel to be champions? Oh, it's an amazing feeling. You know, it's um, it, it's just one of those days where you're never going to forget in football. And uh, the scenes today, uh, our fans have been brilliant all season. They've deserved this. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, it's just uh, you know, words can't describe it. I'm just delighted for my teammates. Delighted for the staff who's worked tirelessly all season. And um, I think in the end, um, I think the best football inside won the uh, championship, and we deserve that. Very well done. Lovely. Well, there you go. I mean, some great moments in your managerial career. What was that like on that stage? Yeah, br brilliant. Um, a lot of hard work has gone into that moment from the players, and they deserve their moment in the sun. I mean, it's just great to see them sharing the moment with the supporters and uh, Bournemouth have won a league, which is, you know, a very hard thing to do uh, at this level. So, an incredible achievement. The goals you scored today, it, it was a trademark Bournemouth victory based on this season, wasn't it, for it, you? It was, really, and I thought it was the first half was outstanding. We were we were excellent. The goals really backed that up. And uh, second half was a little bit more difficult because the pitch dried out, dried out but um, a comfortable win in the end. And just before the end, people became aware of what had happened at Watford. Were, were you aware of it down at pitch side? Well, I was only aware of the reaction of other people, and I'm, I'm a little bit wary with things like that because I know it's been people starting rumours and you're not quite sure what's happened. It's only when... The lads were 100% sure that the game had ended, that yeah, we knew we'd won. And it's poignant, really, because of what happened at Tranmere, where we were heartbroken and felt like we'd been relegated. And uh, this is the total opposite feeling. You always look forward, but right in this moment now, as you savour this, what, what goes through you? Uh, immense pride for, for where the club is at at the moment. Immense pride seeing the supporters as they are. These are scenes that hopefully have been videoed. And, um, we can look back on one day with real satisfaction. You've done it. Well Thank done. you. Thank you very much.